Hello guys and welcome back to the CryEngine Free SDK tutorial series. Uh, in this video I'm going to pretty much elaborate on what we did previously with the time of day. On my screen you can probably see I've got a whole bunch of uh, different lighting effects going on that I did as I did before. You can see I've got a hell of a lot of bloom in the background and just dynamic, uh, basically really 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 bright light but anyway in this video I'm gonna be covering a whole bunch of different HDR settings HDR settings are pretty much mainly for lighting uh, which means I'm gonna be covering bloom uh, lens flares uh, crepro specular rays and all that really really good stuff however I'm only gonna go into the basics so to start off uh, let's just go into our time of day section and then we want to turn up, go to our toggle advanced properties so we can go into our basic HDR setup. Over here we've got our HDR dynamic power factor. This is essentially the brightness. I can change this to zero and boom it is really 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 dark. I can change this to one, I can change this to, I can even change this to 1500. But there is a limit on that which is four. So, the reason for sending it to 4 right now is just so that we can see the full extent to what we're going to be playing around with in the HDR lighting settings. Uh, there are a couple of other HDR things you can find in, in here, such as HDR blue shift threshold and a couple of other things. However, you're going to have to play around with those yourself to get a complete feel of what you're doing. Okay. We've also got global illumination, but that's kind of sucky, and you don't want to play around with that too much. Okay, so, let's close this up with our new brightness turned up, and go to our terrain tab, and then go to environment, as I have done. In the environment section, we can play around with a hell of a lot of properties. Here we've got stuff... Uh, for pretty much everything. Heck, we can change our water material, our skybox material, like in the ocean we can even change fog density, wave, side, w wave size, wind speed, and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to show you too much, but I'm just going to change this to zero, and boom, our waves should stop a little bit, and they're not so, uh, no big. However, I can change this up if needed, and I will have gigantic waves. So, uh, let's just not play around with those right now. Let's just go back to HDR lighting effects. Okay, so in the time of day, make sure that you have uh, your sun nice and up, ready for use. Okay, so let's go down to the main important things at the moment, which is our HDR setup. Over here, let's just go and start off with Bloom. We can change the color of our broom, uh, bloom however we want. You'll see that nothing changed when I just did that. The reason for that is because I haven't changed my bloom multiplier. Bloom multiplier is once again just the intensity. So let's see. I let's say I change this to 15. We got a hell of a lot of bloom. Bloom is pretty much uh, the way light is the amount of light that is. Uh, how can I say? that comes out of uh, emissive lights so you can add intensity to your lights and you can do it in a way that isn't so opaque or however you pronounce it and just looks cool you can use this for adding emotion and atmosphere so let's say I was walking out of a fire or something like that I would have some cool orangey sort of bloom like this. It's, I know it's not so pretty, but uh, hey, what, what can you do, eh? It's somewhat brown, but here we go. If we was walking out some fire, we'd have this cool, awesome bloom effect. And you can see that I've got, uh, that that reacts with specularity and stuff like that. Hence the emission on our uh, Humvees here. I wouldn't advise turning up uh, the bloom as much as I have done unless you're really going for the fire effect that I've just put together. Okay, let's go back and the next settings which we're going to be going playing around with is pretty much the streaks. So, if any of you have ever played around with lens flares in UDK, that's essentially what it is. 
So, let me just change this back down to something like 1, because it's really, really annoying after a while. So, we can play around with our Streaks Multiplier. As you can see here, by uh, pretty much toying with this, it's added a streak. And you can see that on top of the trees there. I can change the scale, not sure why it's not working at the moment. But, uh, yeah. So, let's go and change this back down to 0. This is the main thing we can play around. Streaks multiplier and streaks color. So, to play around with the color, it's actually really, really simple. We just play around with this. It uses uh, RGB or hue set and etc. So, I'm going to make this a nice, lovely pink color. And there we go. That is looking pretty, pretty sexy. And that is on top. So, let's say I had it bloom on top of this. We are going to get loads and loads and loads of lens flares, along with a hell of a lot of bloom, which kind of adds to the effect that you saw earlier. So, so that's just the very basics which I wanted to show you in this video. You should have, you should now have the ability to play around with your bloom, lens flare colors, you know, just adjust it to add atmosphere to your scene. So let's say I showed you the nice core cool fire walking through effect. You can add that into stuff like a campaign. Let's say your car just blew up, boom, you walk out and you got that bloom up and going. And you just do that through time of day. There is other ways you can do it, but I find this the uh, most efficient and fast way to just basically put it together from the very start. Anyway, that's about all I want to cover in this video. Uh, thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.